Shalom, shalom. Greetings from Vision for Africa in Chiunga. Dear ones, I'm so thankful for the ways that we can communicate these days. Also, we are very limited in our movements, but God has given us these fantastic ways to have internet and to have WhatsApp. And so I greet you from the Pearl of Africa, Uganda. And uh, I want to speak encouragement into your heart about what we are going through. <clears throat> this morning I got uh, in, from the Lord in, the, in Proverbs 3, verse 5, a word that really hit me. Lean on, trust, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your path. But be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord, and turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves, and sinews, and marrow, and moistening to your bones. Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from, right, uh, from righteous labors and with the first fruits of all your income. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats be overflowing with new wine. My son, do not despise or shrink from the chastening of the Lord, his correction by punishment or by, subjecting, subje by subjection to suffering or trial. Neither be wary and impatient and loath or abhor his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man, is the woman, who finds skillful and godly wisdom, and the, the, the man or woman who gets understanding, drawing it forth from God's word and life's experiences. For the gaining of it is better than the gaining of silver and the, and the profit of it than fine gold. Skillful and godly wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you can wish for is to be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are highways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her, and happy, blessed, fortunate to be envied is everyone who holds her. And that is wisdom. Dear ones, God is calling us into a life of total communion with Him. He's calling us into a love relationship with Him. Chikumi kuchikumi, a hundred percent. Everything else is not enough. We need to surrender our lives to God into his hands and say, Lord, here I am. Do with me what you want, where you want, how you want. You can do with me anything, but you also can reduce me to zero. And he loves to do that so that you can be everything. But make me a blessing. Bring glory to your name through my life and give me joy the world cannot take and cannot give. So, dear ones, I want to emphasize today the scripture that God has given me. But before that, I want to read you to you from Second Chronicles 7, because that is really that what God is doing right now. He's calling us back into a very deep love relationship, a relationship of the deepest trust you have on this earth. In 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14 and 15, even 16, it says, If I shut up heaven so no rain falls, or if I command locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek, crave, and require of necessity my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, Forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer offered in this place. For I have chosen and sanctified 
I have set apart for holy use his house, the, this nation, every nation, that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be here perpetually. Dear ones, God is calling us into a deep, deep love relationship with himself. And uh, it's no longer a matter of religion, you know. Religious people think they can do something to get something. No, that is, to me, is harlotry. You give something to get something. No, God wants us to have a relationship where we have already gotten everything. He says, come to me, come to me, and then he will give you everything so that you can give out of a blessed heart. You know, I am not giving nothing in order to get something, not from God, not from man. I only give because God tells me and because God has given me. And that is the key to a life of deep satisfaction, deep satisfaction. I know I don't need to do anything anymore in order to be loved by God. He loves me. He loves you. He's crazy about you. And he wants you to receive that love and then let that love flow through you to whatever God has prepared for you. So let me just uh, mention a few scriptures from the fear of the Lord. And by the way, the fear of the Lord does not mean trembling before God. It means respecting God, respecting his orders. It means respecting his ways. And uh, the, the scripture in, in Proverbs 22, 4 has now been a very strong message in my life for many years. It says, the wages, and wages is something you earn, the wages of humility. And humility, dear ones, is not making yourself small. It means making God big. You can pray, Lord, bless me so much that I can be the best blessing anywhere and, and make me an instrument to make your name great. And he will do it. And the fear of the Lord, and the fear of the Lord means I respect God, I obey his orders, I do what he says. If I like it or not, if I want it or not, I respect him. He is the ultimate authority in my life. And then when you have this total commitment to God, that he should glorify his name through you. You are available to him. Every morning you pray, Lord, what is the adventure for the two of us? Let me see what you have prepared in heaven. And you walk in it. That's how Jesus did it. You don't need to have great ideas of yourself, from yourself. You just ask the Holy Spirit, what am I here for on this earth? What have you planned for today? And then do every day what he says to you. And a lot of things will just be common sense. And you will see in the evening how God enriches your life by walking in close fellowship all day long with him. So, I want to read to you now scriptures from uh, the word of God about the fear of the Lord, living in the fear, living in respect. In Psalm 34, 14, turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cries. Psalm 112, praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. In Jeremiah 17, 5, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. But the next scripture says, but blessed is the man who trusts in God. He will be like a tree planted on the riverside and it will flow, life will flow no matter what the circumstances. In Psalm 25, 14, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. God looks for people that trust him more than anything else, even themselves. And he wants them to be their co-laborers on earth. In Psalm 34, 8 to 12, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him, who respect him, lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever 
of you loves life and desires to see many good things, many good days. God wants us to be happy on earth. He wants to bless us. But we need to come into this intimate, close love relationship and trust relationship with him. Now, I've also found a scripture to this corona issue. Go, my people, in Isaiah 26, 20. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. And I think that is the time now for us to seek him until this whole craziness of this coronavirus has passed us by. But let me tell you and many more. There are so many scriptures about the fear of the Lord. Psalm 103, 11 and 17. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him, who respect him. Verse 17. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. So it's not just for your generation. I had a grandmother who was a great, great woman of faith, a great woman of uh, trust in God, a great woman of prayer. And I do believe the grace that I experience in my life is highly uh, uh, because of her investment into the generations, the children's children. And I'm very thankful for this grandmother. And I trust that even the children that God has entrusted me, their children will also be, will also be very blessed. Psalm 111 verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Then Psalm 112, 1, praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. You know, we need to become obedient again. Obedience is what blesses God and what brings blessings into our lives. In Psalm 11963, I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. Proverbs 10, 34 and 27, what the wicked dread will overtake them, what the righteous desire will be granted. You know, it's a very, very important that in those day, in these days now, you are not allowing the fear of the, 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 the fear to grip your heart. Because fear spells false evidence appearing real. But let faith grip your heart. For all I trust him. Dear ones, it is a time to trust God more than any, any, any body and anything. So we need to not look as much into the WhatsApps and the internet, but into the word of God. <clears throat> so what the wicked dread, what they fear will overtake them. Job said, what I feared came upon me. That was the open door he gave the devil. So let's not fear uh, Corona. Let's not fear what might be ahead of us, but let's trust the Lord. What the righteous desire will be granted. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. In Proverbs 14, 26 and 27, the faithless will be fully repaid for their ways and the good rewarded for theirs. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from a snare of death. Proverbs 15, 33. Wisdom's instructions is to fear the Lord and humility comes before God. No, before honor, sorry. i read it again. Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord and humility comes before honor. Hum Proverbs 22, 4. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Psalm 28, 1 and 4. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience in him. 4. Yes, this will be a blessing for the man who fears the Lord. Proverbs 8, 13. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Isaiah 2, 11 to 14. The eyes of the arrogant will be humbled and human pride brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The Lord Almighty has a day in store 
for all the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted, and they will be humbled. Dear ones, let's humble ourselves. Let's get down on our knees and confess the greatness of God. Now I want to read to you another scripture that has been given to us in our prayer altar for the world. The, Lo the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, set your face against Sidon, prophecy against her, and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Sidon, and among you I will display my glory. You will know that I am the Lord when I inflict punishment on you and within you am proved to be holy. I will send a plague upon you and make blood flow in your streets. The slain will fall within you with the sword against you on every side. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Dear ones, let us not challenge God to give us even a harder time. Let us confess our sins, turn around. Turn around from everything that's evil. And there is a lot in the whole world. We have started making our own laws to even, huh, when I just think that in Europe, they are no longer allowed to say mother and father, but parent one and parent two. Otherwise, the preacher is liable to lose his position. This, to me, screams to heaven. And all the other things, you know what's going on. I don't want even to mention it. How we have gone far away from holiness, from righteousness, from walking in the light. But we have listened to the enemy and he has found ways to, dis to destroy us and to lead us astray. So dear ones, let's turn around. Let's turn around. Repent means to choose a 180% turn because God wants to bless us. God wants to restore us into a love relationship with him. And I promise you, I experience it daily. There's no better life than when you make Jesus first in your life. And then you have joy. And joy spells J-O-Y. Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. The Lord bless you, bless you, keep you, and make his face shine upon you. And open the ears of your heart so that you hear his word and give you the grace to obey so that he can bless you and restore you. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen.